Welcome to the last part of our four-part interview of MIT professor Tsung Hua Zhao. In this part, we dive into innovation, startups, and the future of transportation. All right, we can move a bit to more of the technology and entrepreneurship part. So technology and entrepreneurship play a big role in Professor Zhao's work. He teaches students how to launch mobility and innovations. In this segment, we'll explore how new technologies and startups are shaping the future of transportation. So let's start with the current state of the mobility startup ecosystem. What are the exciting emerging mobility technologies in your mind? I mean, there are obvious ones like Waymo, Zooks, Aurora, uh, Joby, uh, Apollo Go, all those exciting ones. But I also want to mention a few, uh, I think, uh, areas that's a niche market. For example, uh, companies help with uh, uh, blind people to navigate the system, right? Uh, there's this peripheral, peripheral system that to support uh, charging, repair, emergency services of electric vehicles, right? Uh, there's also innovations like in the uh, uh, air, air industry or broadly defined, but the traditional air industry, but also this new uh, urban or regional air services like Jet Zero, they develop this body wing blended aircraft. Uh, can improve the uh, the fuel efficiency by fifty percent, right? So those are the exciting areas uh, areas in in transportation startup, ranging between this from these uh, uh, sizable uh, uh, companies like Waymo, Zooks, to this very small niche company who try to solve a very small problem. So there's a wide range of exciting uh, startups going on. Um. What are the main challenges for these technologies? Are they more innovation challenges or regulatory challenges? I mean, obviously both exist, but relative to a startup being, say, an information technology, right? Uh, providing a social media apps, the regulatory challenge in transportation demand is high because transportation, you cannot service it in the vacuum. You have to rely on public facility part of the infrastructure, often the roads, the water, the air are heavily regulated for very good reasons. Right. Right? So startup in transportation or mobility sector have to deal with those uh, public sectors, uh, both in terms of the regulatory sense, but also in terms of the supportive sense. Right? The, the public sector is not just regulate, but also support. So the startup in mobility have to learn how to interact with the public sector, with the community, much deeply, much more deeply than uh, if you're a startup in the, say, information technology sector. And this is more geared to younger folks like me. So what are the biggest gaps or unmet needs in the mobility space that you think the next generation of entrepreneurs um, should focus on? And I'll be taking close notes on this one. Sure, yeah. Uh, the first one is, uh, I mentioned this niche market, uh, the, the mobile service for disabled. Mm -hmm. For the black, the mobile service for senior uh, yeah. for use, right? So this is a, a actually quite sizable market with a huge social need that that need to be met. Uh, there's another categories on this uh, uh, data governance, privacy, pro how to define property right of data, right? How do you aggregate the data, use the data without infringing on uh, individual privacy, or how do you enable a meaningful market transaction of that? The third one I will add is the, the resilient system. Uh, resilient both in terms of the, uh, against this uh, natural disasters, uh, uh, climate change, but also resilient in, against the cyber attack, the security issues there, right? Okay. Uh, often we'll find that uh, the transportation system is built, uh, assuming that uh, uh, we're all friends, uh, we're all behaving well, right? Uh, but there are uh, uh, malicious behaviors in uh, entities there. How do you design the system to be resilient against this? This is more true when you have a more connected and autonomous vehicle situation, right? In this uh, current state where you have a human-driven, isolated vehicles, even you are a hacker, you cannot control every single car. But imagine a world where you have all these connected and autonomous vehicles. If... At this point, certain hacker take control over the system that really can wreck uh, havoc of it. 
So to wrap up, let's focus on the future. So the title of our podcast is The Future of Transportation. So what do you think could be the biggest surprises for the future of transportation in the next 10 to 20 years? The first one I would say is, can we not only solve a mobility problem, but also build better cities? Mm -hmm. right? The goal is not just transporting more vehicles, have more vehicle mile travel, but to build vibrant, livable, creative cities. That's one goal I would wish to see. The second one is on climate change. Uh, in the US, transportation contribute 29% of the CO2 emission. I think we'll, we'll do it at some point. The question is, can we do it quickly enough? Mm -hmm. That's where you have this irony. From one side, technology progressing really fast on battery, on uh, uh, electric vehicle. But at the policy level and the behavior level, Americans, I would say at best, are ambivalence in the willingness to uh, try and solve the problem. So that's another big uh, unknown and surprises. Right. Uh, the, the third one I would add is about automation. Uh, 10 years ago, there are a lot of buzz about autonomous vehicle, right? Cities are piloting it, uh, working, having workshops, publicizing white papers. But unfortunately, technology was not, not mature. Today, it's the opposite. Technology has arrived, but the city is rather silent on this, right? I would encourage more city to actively engage in the discussion of this uh, uh, system design question of how to embed autonomous vehicle in the urban mobility system. Well, last but not least, what advice would you give to high school or college students interested in transportation research, transit policy, and mobility innovation? I would say, first of all, be, be comfortable with conflict. Mm -hmm. I think there's so many different objectives in transportation, right? Uh, at the beginning, we say, oh, what does transportation profession do? We solve congestion problem. But later we say, oh, transportation is also a sustainability problem, a climate change problem. Today, we talk about transportation as a public health problem, a personal identity problem, a city creativity problem. So as, as an individual researcher, the particular younger ones, just be, be comfortable embracing multiple definitions of what success, what transportation is about, right? That's the first one. The second one is also, I guess, with the artificial intelligence coming in, what's the meaningful job that human can do? Right? What our advantage over AI? I would say it's very much unknown at this stage. Yeah. All that I only say, say what I would say is be mentally prepared for changes. Mm -hmm. If every three years I had to learn something new and adapt myself, so be it, right? Uh, be uh, uh, prepared, be almost anticipate such changes in the future career, rather than say, I learned these tools, I'm going to work on for 20 years, that year I think will be gone. Well, thank you so much for, for joining our podcast. And I certainly learned a lot and hopefully um, other people can also learn a bit. So thank you so much. Thank you very much. Enjoy the conversation with you. Thanks, <laughs> Sophia. Thank you so much for watching. If you enjoyed, hit like, subscribe, and stay tuned for more deep dives into the future of transportation. I'll see you next time.